Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Dustin Watton, Team USA libero and 10-year pro. And I'm so excited to have you. Day seven, today is going to be fun. And what a great opportunity to remember what this series is all about and that the goal is the opportunity. To give your team a consistent opportunity, I believe pursuing tips, touches, and shots all come down to the individual player's mindset and their ability to not hesitate, but to go for every single ball. Mindset is number one, but once you have that down, there's also a benefit to learning how to dive and how to diversify your toolbox to how you can contort the ball with your hand and your wrist. Getting the tip doesn't have to look great. It doesn't have to look pretty, although I will teach you how you can be very graceful. It can look ugly for all I care. The most important part about pursuing a tip is that it comes up and if your team has an opportunity to transition out of it. So let's get into it. How to leave our feet. Before we get into the art of how we can touch and contort a tip or touch off the block to our setter, let's first learn how we can best leave our feet, putting ourselves in the best opportunity to make a great touch on the ball. The first dive is what I like to call the Jiba dive. Like GOAT in Area 6 defense, Jiba played the game with an unparalleled passion and it showed in his ability to perceive balls off the block with his unique dolphin style dive. But for the sake of keeping it simple, we will refer to it as the Jiba dive. It's my favorite way to dive when I have multiple steps in pursuing a ball off the block or rain down a shank dig. Recently I've used a different style for tips in front of me, but we'll get into that later. The reason why I love the Jiba style is because of the momentum we were able to derive from our legs, which transitioned to our platform, which is able to help whip the ball behind us. Similar to a trebuchet. Probably didn't think you'd hear the word trebuchet today, but hey, we're working hard. So my keys for diving like Jiba, number one, with each step, get a little lower. Number two, we're gonna kick off one foot. The other needs to explode up in the air. Kind of like a, a donkey kick. Number three, keep your chest up as you're diving. Don't wanna bust open your chin, it happens way too much. Number four, as soon as your first foot starts to kick up, start to kick the second foot in the air. Five, take the ball, whether it's a pancake, two arms, one arm. Six, land with both hands pushing through the floor, allowing the body to slide through the floor softly. Next up, the Bruno dive. It's a little different, as you can see his inside foot takes a step towards the line and lunges his body with his outside arm leading the way, his right arm. This naturally opens up his body towards the court and on contact, you can see he peels his hips open again back towards the middle of the court, either landing on the side or on the back depending how much you extend and how far you hips are open towards the middle of the court. Here's another great example by Maruf. You can see he's kind of flat-footed, but just opens up everything back to the court and falls on his back, creating and contorting an angle back to the middle of the court with his whole body. I love this style so much, especially for balls in front of us. The last of my favorite technique to leave our feet is the sprawl. So old school, right? It's kind of boring. Most of the time it hurts, but it's a great way to make a split second move to get under the ball. The full body pancake, right? I use this move for quick deflections off the block, a tip that is thrown fast at my feet, or a ball that is snapped just in front of me. We don't really have time to plan or dive in order to take a couple steps. We just have to go from our defensive position to being on the floor as quickly as we can. So how do we sprawl? Depending if the ball is two feet or more in front of you, you can take a step, you're gonna to wanna to aim your chest to the ground, either with one arm or our arms locked, shoot them through the ground and under the ball. One leg will slide under, kind of making a four shape. If it is our right leg, our knee will be pointing out either three o'clock. If it is our left leg, our knee will be pointing out at nine o'clock. The rest of the leg from the knee to the foot will be directed to six o'clock behind us. And our other leg will be pointed straight back. Simple, not pretty. Sometimes not smooth, but you can see as uh, Luke and Serginia, you know, nonetheless, it's a great tool to dig balls that we have no time to react to. So let's get creative with how we touch the ball. Learning how to pursue and dive is just the first step. 
Let's get to the fun part and diversifying our toolbox and different ways we can contort the ball. Close fist, the original style, the one that isn't going out of style anytime soon. As I mentioned with the Jiba dive, we can begin this momentum with our legs, but we can also derive this trebuchet momentum with our elbows and our wrist. It all starts with our shoulder as we need to drive our shoulder perpendicular towards the ground right upon contacting the ball. We can then begin this trebuchet movement by slinging our wrist and elbow simultaneously back into our body. Imagine a dolphin going in and out of the water through the air. Envision that dolphin at the peak of his jump about to go back into the water as his body is prepared to dive, but as soon as his head no dives into the water, he's contorting his body back to the surface using the energy to fling his body back into the air. It's this fluid movement that helps us get the best trajectory on the ball, whether we are pursuing a tip towards the net or even away from the court. It will naturally help us contort the ball high and behind us. The pros, we have the most control of this touch, easy to use this touch with fast reactions close to the body, can equally be used to pursue balls inside and outside of the court. The cons, just a small area of contact. Flipper, a little twist on the closed fist pursuit with different cons and benefits in comparison. Pros, bigger area of contact, more control for being outstretched away from the ball. It's great to use if you're in between the idea of a closed fist or a pancake, Cons, just less range of motion in the wrist and getting the ball going behind us and high. Open hand scoop. This technique I believe is underused because it's undertrained. I love this technique for pursuing balls hit off the block to the side or behind us as we have both tons of area for our contact and tons of range of motion in bringing the ball behind us back to the center of the court. The only place where this technique can turn on us is when we are pursuing a ball in front of us or into the court, as it is incredibly difficult to be as precise as this touch, even though you can see Satorsky and Koga making it look easy. Pros, the biggest area of contacting for pursuing balls, great range of motions and contorting the ball high and behind us. It's great for pursuing balls behind us and outside the court, cons, it's just really difficult to be precise. Uh, I think it shouldn't be used in balls in front of you or balls that we're pursuing inside the court just because it's so hard to be precise. Number four, never pancake. Is surprisingly what I hear from pro and youth coaches alike. But you know what? There is a time and place for everything. And if you haven't heard it enough, the opportunity is the goal. <laughs> Sometimes there is no other way to get a ball up except through a pancake. It may be a quick reaction cover, a tip that was very well concealed, a ball off the block, or even an attack for the break. We have to change our relationship with this unbelievably unique style for defense, as it can not only serve for a last resort defense, but like a one-on-one -on -one stuff block or winning a long rally, it also brings with it a ton of excitement when performed well. I believe that when we train defense and pursuing balls, pancakes should be off the menu for options. Too often as the defenders, we will time our pursuit for the perfect pancake rather than driving low and fast with each step and then making a decision when we get to the ball. I believe that when we do train pancakes, it is a drill all in itself as allowing pancakes in coach on ones or other defensive drills. We allow the athlete to lean towards the deep with the least amount of effort, the pancake, and developing bad habits. Enough about the philosophy of pancakes, let's learn how you can become a pancake master. Just like with every pursuit dig, with each step, we should be lower to the ground. Chest up, chin up, the opposite foot, the hand you're preparing your pancake with, take a big lunge towards the ball. Allow your non-digging hand to absorb your fall while pushing you forward. Weight needs to be on this hand, not your digging hand, for the digging hand to slide forward and not have that resistance from the floor. Slide your digging hand towards the ground, either on the ball or inches away where the ball will land as we can slide into it. Our digging elbow will be initially bent towards three o'clock and with contact of the floor, it will extend straight towards the ball. 
Allow the fingers to extend as much as possible with the goal of having as much of the hand as possible touching the floor and pancake. Pros, great for balls out of reach. With the right touch, it can be used as well as a regular dig, sometimes needed for touches close to the net. Cons, with too much of a focus, it can create bad habits. Timing pancakes rather than running through the ball is something we want to avoid. And there's not much air or time for teammates to make a good second touch on the ball. I love it. You are fully locked and loaded. So many tools in your toolbox for you to get back on the court and to play with a new sense of confidence, freedom, and creativity. Get out there and crush it. And if you make a big defensive play, throw a no easy bucket hashtag on it and send it my way on Instagram. You guys know I love seeing all of your big defensive plays. Remember, the first step is mindset. From there, you now have all the tools to be your best version. Better today, better tomorrow, better together. Love you guys.